All right, y'all, so we are back with a little bit of information. A lot's going on. Actually, a lot's going on. There's a lot of things that I'm seeing that I'm kind of excited about. Some some stuff we kind of don't know what's going on and how it's going to end and stuff like that. So we're just going to be jumping in and talking about everything that's happening right now. So we have a few topics, the first of which is there is a guy going around giving people hope in the community. Now, we've read some of his tweets before. He's usually, I think, complaining about something or making some type of points. I don't think he usually says anything necessarily crazy, but this tweet recently came out and I was asked to interview him. He said, I have good news for those affected by BitForex. BitForex has been intervened by authorities. The remaining funds are safe. This is all I can say. We are fighting hard to recover your funds. Together we are strong. I'm not sure who we is. I'm not sure who this guy represents. I don't know anything about this guy. And then when he was asked by multiple people, um, is there any source? I mean, can you provide any support for this statement? Like, a lot of people are asking, yo, where are you getting your information? Like, where can we verify what you're saying? And then he just goes radio silent. So I don't believe this is a source that you can trust. So I don't want people getting their hopes up. I said in my last video, in one of my last videos, that not financial advice, but what I would personally do in this situation is chalk it up to an L because at the point where you've already accepted that you've lost, the only place you can do, go is up from there. Like at the point where you're at rock bottom, you can only go up from there. So, I mean, moving under the assumption that, that what you had is lost forever is, and now you have to rebuild and, and make more moves to, you know, it's time to worry about next steps. I don't, unless it's some type of official statement, I wouldn't be getting hopes up. But I know a lot of people are still hoping, a lot of people, and, and that's great. Like, it's nothing wrong with hoping and wishing that, that something happens because it could potentially happen. But don't I wouldn't I wouldn't stay focused on that every single day and getting your hopes up every time you see some random guy tweet something because, yeah, I don't know who he's affiliated with. I don't know if he's supposedly affiliated with BitForex, but, I mean, I doubt he's affiliated with BitForex. He tweets about VV all the time. And the VV team, the CEO himself, has come out and said, they haven't really gotten information because they're not getting a response. So if he's not with Vivi and Vivi can't even get a response and they have their token on Bitforex, how would this guy be getting a response? Who would he have to be with to be getting a response? Like, so I, it's, it's just a lot of questions. So this guy's credibility when it comes down to something like this is not, it's non-existent. So yeah, that being said, take anything that you're seeing like this with a grain of salt unless they provide sources, facts, and things of that nature. That, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty much it on that one. Let's move on to the next topic here. Um, so, yeah, this is actually kind of bullish to an extent. So, check it out. Um, this was one comment. This is one thing that I saw. He says, Brandon says, also a place for investors who see the potential. So, he's talking about this in terms of an investment. And he's talking about that aspect of it. Um, which obviously VV and the VV team no longer talks about this in that way. Why? SEC. They have to be careful of language when it comes down to NFTs and they have to be careful of language when using the OMI token that could be registered as a security. So it's all types of stuff going on that, that prevents the team themselves from communicating certain things in certain ways. So they can't be out here talking about this project in terms of it's an investment. It's a digital collectibles platform that allows you to make purchases using a, a token. That, that That's how they, they would describe it because that's the politically correct way to say it. Um, now, in the reality, what, what users should understand is the investment potential in something like this because Uber wasn't really an investment vehicle, yet people who invested in Uber got Uber rich from it. So, I mean, you invest investment investing is very, very simple, man. You invest in something while it's small when it has the potential to go up and you think it has the potential to become bigger. Um, that's really as simple as an investment is. So if you believe VB can go up and you truly believe that and you're willing to put your money where your mouth is or put your money where your faith is, then boom, that should be an investment and you wait to see what happens. I mean, it, sh it shouldn't really be that big of a deal. Like people, people over invest and over leverage and stuff like that. You get too tied to a project. You get too in love with a project and it's cool to be in love with the project but you also have to be able to detach from it so yeah that being said he said also a place for investors who see the potential changes that blockchain 
AR and AI are creating for people to interact with their favorite fandoms, brands, and IP with like-minded people digitally. I see them as digital assets that are in many ways superior to add on top of or with the physical. So that's his vision. And as you can see, Foster, who now works with the Ecomi team, says, I'm not allowed to talk about that stuff. So this, this says to me that he, even though he can't speak on it from about the investors aspect, this tells me that he probably knows some things, some things that's coming. He knows some things that some directions and some stuff that could probably get us excited, but he can't say anything about it because he's under NDA. If he didn't know anything at all, he would have nothing to say anyway. So not being able to talk about something and, and it's completely different than not having anything to talk about. Because if he didn't have anything to talk about or anything to add to this or anything that, he, that that could be said here, he just wouldn't have said anything. But he can't talk about what he knows. So that tells me that he knows something that could potentially be bullish for the future of this project, which is great. Um, it's great if it's, if it's actually bullish, man. Like, Because I don't know. Like These days, I really don't know, man. I don't follow enough of the influencers, the former influencers and stuff like that to really know everyone's perspectives, where everyone stands and things like that, because I really don't care as much as I once did, to be honest. I, I work on improving myself as an investor. And what another man does has never really impacted me, so I focus on that less. I, I, I like to drown out all the noise and focus on me, my inner self, my inner peace, and and my, my the clarity of my mind and my mental state. So, yeah, like... I, I don't know, but it sounds it sounds like it could be potentially bullish to me. Now we're gonna go into some more questionable things. So some more some more David U here. So as you can see, um, agree with Jedi here. The notion of an interview being unfair is silly. Ask tough questions, give good answers. Approached by skeptic, it's an opportunity to explain. Maybe a couple questions were pointed. A CEO can handle. Um, pointed questions this is not like commentary so basically he basically said uh david's a grown man and he can speak for himself he can he can answer a question so as you can see um dj's opinion is that it's unfair if david you ha haven't been briefed about the questions related to bit forex saga don't forget we have dan crothers and co-founder of ecomi who is knowledgeable on web3 much more than david you to answer that question david you is a scapegoat so, I mean, as you can see, people are defending David, trying to chalk it up to him being a scapegoat and stuff like that. Early on in this project, there was not a question that you could ask David about the project that he couldn't have given you an answer about. Maybe he didn't know the technical details, but I mean, he could have given you the answers then. One thing that I, I'll repeat here that I've said in, in the previous video is that I feel as though David is too focused on meetings with, inner, with, with, uh, with like people who talk about regulations, lawyers and stuff like that so all day every day he's being told that's impossible we don't know about this we don't know if we can do that we don't know if that's legal it's like that crushes someone's creativity i don't think that he should be the one in those type of meetings i don't think that i think that he should be focused on moving the business forward personally personally that's where that's the position that i would think david would shine best in it's just moving the business forward letting someone else take meetings to handle this stuff he shouldn't be in meetings all day he should be focused on vision as far as how you can legally and properly take this vision forward, that should be left to someone else who's not the passion behind it. Because when you're the passion behind it, getting those no's, getting those, getting those like getting those blows to your confidence and oh, we can't do that. That's impossible. We don't know if that'll ever be like that stuff. That stuff can impact your ability to be creative because when you're trying to go through your normal creative process, which normally you have some really great and amazing ideas, now you're going to bring your ideas down and make it a lot more realistic as to what's realistic now. What's realistic now is not the same thing that'll be realistic maybe a year from now. So I want somebody like David thinking at maximum capacity at all points in time. I don't want him to have an idea, then think about what his lawyer said, and now that idea gets dumbed down. Like, no. If, if the idea has to wait a couple of years to come into fruition, that's when it should come. So I want the best idea implemented. That's, that's what I would like. The best, I want the best ideas implemented because the ideas that David's ideas and the vision for this project is what sold us all and made us all come here. What's changed when it comes down to this project is the real world intervening with what's currently possible at these points in time which is fine. 
like I said, I don't have an issue with things changing based on where we are tech, when it comes down to the tech, when it comes down to regulations and stuff like that. I have an issue with how poor VV communicates because if you could just communicate this to people, a lot of this stuff would not really be a problem. People would understand, yo, um, yeah, it's just going to take some time to do certain things because there's so much unclarity surrounding it. But as far as something being unfair, like, Nah, a CEO should be able to answer the questions. Even if it's not his department, even if it's not something that he can answer specifics about, he should be able to answer simple questions. And, and I think a lot of those questions, like where is VV going? Like is what is VV meant to be? People tried to make that seem like it was a very simple question. No, it's not a very simple question. We was promised Ready Player One. Now it's looking like something not even anywhere close to Ready Player One. So if the vision for what VV was going to be has changed and people like the thing is people are pretending like the vision hasn't changed or maybe people have forgotten what the vision was supposed to be in the first place like people a lot of people might not have been here when they were talking about batman scaling walls and ready player one and all of this stuff vv has been the digital collectibles company for so long now at this point maybe people forgot why a lot of us were, were initially here so yeah but last topic here let's move on to the last one um <clears throat> The um, biggest topic. Okay, so um, Omi Token Utility. The, the next Omi Token Utility is going to be Omi 2 NFT. It's just been confirmed. Um, we are aware of how important this feature is for the community, and when it is ready to roll out, more information will be provided. So this is the next thing concerning the Omi Token that's going to be coming. This is huge. This this um, this um shows that there's intent for the token. They're trying to actually do something with the token, which I think is very, very bullish. Now, as you can see, in 2021, they also tweeted... You can convert your Omi to gems to purchase our premium NFTs. More utility will also be built for the token when we open the Vverse. Stay tuned for that. Now, this was in 2021. The Vverse has not been opened. We don't have utility. It's like it's a lot going on here. And as you can see, this right here, look at the little chart on how much we can complete. Like you can see how people feel about this. My man say over a year later, and they've checked off one of those. What a joke. Just more manipulation and lies. This company seriously needs to be audited. So, obviously, someone's not happy about the pro progression of the OMI token, which this this is the problem with them not communicating. I can sit here and rationalize and think about how difficult it would be if regulations for a token for or for a crypto is changing. Like, the thing with other cryptos is they don't actually do anything. They don't actually do anything. There's no product associated with most other cryptos. So they don't have to consider use cases for that product. It's just a token that exists. It's on exchanges. It can be traded. So people are people shut up and they're happy. With the OMI token, they have a lot to consider because they're actually trying to use the OMI token. Actually, so I can see how it could be complicated. I can see how they have to look at the rules and regulate. I can rationalize things taking so long when it comes down to this company. The problem is the poor communication, it just makes it look like a joke, bro. It makes it look like a joke. Um, yeah, it, it's the, the communication is very, very poor. And that's something that they need to work on. They need someone who can actually communicate well what's going on even and then communicate well when you just can't communicate what's going on. Because people don't even need answers. People just would like to know that something is going on. We just can't talk about it right now because it's a complex situation. It's like we're left to assume they know what they're doing. Really, it's looking like they don't have no idea what they're doing. That's what the reality looks like. They have no clue what they're doing. So, yeah, um, they make themselves look this way. They put themselves in a position where they get this type of feedback and hate. They keep doing this to themselves. And this is why I say... 99% of the stuff that VV gets in hot water about is completely unavoid it's, it's completely avoidable if they just communicated well. If they just, you know, chose a different approach. But I digress. That's pretty much it for this one, y'all. Let me know what you think about all these topics down below. Drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And I'll catch y'all on the next one, fam. Peace out, y'all.